Hello and welcome to our channel from sunny, sunny Portugal. In today's video, we visit the most beautiful garden we have been to in Portugal and a huge upgrade happens on our farm. We've been living off grid here in Portugal for the past five to six years. And one of the very first things that I needed to do was set up a solar system. Now I'm no electrician. And to be honest, I was quite intimidated when I first decided to try and do it myself, but I got through it. When we were here at that point in time in Portugal, there weren't many suppliers of kits it was more like buying everything and they install it for you from the companies here and it was really really expensive and after a lot of research i figured out how to do it but unfortunately we couldn't afford a massive system or lithium batteries so i ended up getting four agm sealed batteries um, but always in the back of my mind I was worried when these batteries eventually die, which with AGM seed batteries, it's normally between six and 10 years. Are we going to be able to afford to replace them? Luckily, nowadays, lithium batteries have gone down and I'll be updating our solar system in this episode. Apart from the solar system itself, I think I also <laughs> need to upgrade this poor excuse of a door <laughs> don't be too hard on me guys this was the first door i built <laughs> i obviously forgot to put a diagonal and pretty immediately everything just went lopsided i do have a couple of steel doors which might fit that door we'll see so maybe we'll do that too so i'll quickly show you our solar setup over here which i installed five years ago there's our 3k inverter charge controller and there's the fuse is coming from the solar panels and the fuse to the battery bank over there and these are four 12 volt agm seed batteries i believe they're well let's see 200 amp hour let's see if you can see that 200 amp hour batteries uh, 12 volt so they're connected in series and in parallel so that gives us a 24 volt system with uh, 400 amp hours and there's our six 325 watt solar panels now this system has served us really well over the past five years we really haven't had any problems with it but it is coming to the time where they need to be replaced their lifespan is normally I think six to 10 years. So I was expecting it to start not charging to 100% within the next year. So I started researching um, prices of lithium ion phosphate batteries because they are the best type of battery that you can get. The advantages of, of uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries are well known. They are considered even better than lithium ion just because they're safer. They have an increased power output, faster charging, reduced weight and longer lifetime so lithium ion phosphate were definitely the ones we wanted to get we just had to see if they were affordable now because five years ago they definitely weren't and what do you know out of the blue this company that produces lithium ion phosphate batteries contacted us to review one of their batteries look what i just picked up from the post thank you power queen and two wow they're so much lighter than ordinary batteries <clears throat> ah, i'm so excited lithium iron phosphate batteries luxury all right so they're supposed to have sent us two 24 volt 100 amp hour batteries so let's see what's in the box okay these are the post bolts so you can connect your cables to the battery the delivery time was literally three days so that was pretty good from when they sent them okay you've got your manual 
and some stickers over here. We'll go through that soon. And here is the battery, the Power Queen 25.6 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery. Let's pull it out. It's just so much lighter than an ordinary LED battery, eh? For what it is. Now let's see some of the specs of this battery. Okay, so straight up it's um, much lighter than normally LED batteries. It's around 19 to 20 kilos and the dimensions are 53 by 21 by 20 centimeters. And the housing is all made out of ABS plastic, which is fire retardant, and it's completely sealed. So it is IP65 rated, so you can leave them outside in the rain, which is awesome, especially if you're using it on a, on a boat. So this has a really good BMS, which is a battery management system. And what a battery management system is control all the temperatures and open and close its valves. So it can maintain the temperature of the battery within like a narrow space specification so it ensures optimal battery performance now it has low temperature protection automatic charging at zero degrees celsius automatic recharging at five degrees celsius and automatic discharging at minus 20 degrees celsius so inside you have high quality class a battery cells with a five-year guarantee so that will give you about 4,000 to 15,000 cycles with a, a service life of 10 years and it brings it down to 80%. So you can hook up four in parallel and then in series, so eight batteries, and that will give you a total of 20 kilowatt hours. If you have, that's the maximum you can have with this, with this type of battery. Now, if you want an expert opinion on the quality of all the parts of this battery, I really recommend going to Tech Hobo. I go to him with anything to do with solar because he, he knows his stuff. And I put a link to a video in the description below where he pretty much cuts it open and inspects what's inside. In that video, he does tell you what good quality parts they used and it's built really well. And you do have to be careful when you're buying some, some of these batteries because there's a lot of companies out there that just use reconditioned parts and battery cells. But even though they are much cheaper than they used to be, you do want to get something which is good quality and will last. So let's go through the manual and then we'll uh, switch over my old batteries with these beauties. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what they put in here. We have a manual in German. <laughs> Put that aside. And the manual in English. Awesome. Quick start guide, I think. Do's and don'ts. Connecting precautions in English and in German. And stickers. Ooh, nice. Some pretty cool stickers there. Little things, please, little minds. <laughs> Okay, so the, the manual gives you all the, all the settings I need to put into the inverter, which is handy. You don't need a lithium ion phosphate specific inverter charge controller. Um, as long as you have the user defined setting, you can just set like when it cuts out charging, so it avoids overcharging, when to cut out before it's completely depleted, when to start again. So there's all the information in here, so I'll do that as, after I put them in. But first things first, let's pull out the old batteries. Now we are going to keep our old batteries because they're still working fine, even though they don't have a long lifespan left. But I do plan to use them. They're 12 volts. So I do plan to use them on some 12 volt water pumps in the future once we get some ponds in and need to move water from one place to the other. So I'm planning to use those batteries with just a charge control and a solar panel and a 12 volt water pump and then have them where I need them. So for now we'll just store them um, somewhere away and just make sure that we charge them every six months or so just to, to keep them maintained. Well let's get in there and pull out the old ones. Okay so first thing solar panels off, inverter off, output off. Okay let's disconnect these batteries.
So that's the ones going into the inverter disconnected. Do the rest. Okay, that's the, the batteries disconnected. Let's get them out of here. Out with the old, in with the new. I think first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this door because it really bugs me hitting my back. Okay, bye bye door. If you can even call it a door. I wonder what's living in between these batteries, eh? I know we had a couple of resident geckos in here. Man, these are heavy. So, can you help me? Yeah. I need some help. Yeah, I need your help because they're just so heavy, these. I can't do it on my own. The other one. The other one. That's it. Oh my goodness. Hey. Yeah. You're okay? Yeah. Let's yeah. put them in there and store it. <laughs> it's crazy, eh? Like the at least oh. half the weight. They must be a 40 kilos those. Hi, good to lift this one up and see the difference. Yeah, well, like <laughs> at lift, least half, eh? I can lift it up by myself. This. That's great. That's what I can't <laughs> <laughs> Let's grab the other three. So what's really good is when you convert from AGM or lead, lead batteries is just the weight and the size of them for the amount of power you can actually get out of them. Like those, those AGM sealed ones, they're uh, 200 amp hour, what did I say, 12 volt, but they're in series and in parallel. So I have 400 amp hours at 24 volts, which gives you what, 9,600 watt hours. But with lead batteries and AGM sealed ones, you can only take, they say 80%, to leave 80% is better, but you can go down to 50. So in reality, if you go down to 50, you've got five, five kilowatt hours really, 4.8 or whatever it is. Now these, they're half the weight and half the size, because these are 24 volt, 100 amp hour, so I have two which makes 200 times 25, so that's five kilowatts, but you can pretty much bring them down to very close to 0%. So I've got the same amount of power on hand, but half the size, and especially if you're on an RV or in a boat or something, this might really make a difference, at least half the weight. So let's get the bolts, hook them up in parallel, and get them connected. One. So they give you four of them for each battery. I only need two. Cool. <laughs> Too easy. Love it. So they're the same size, so at least I don't have to change all the insulation around it. And hopefully, once I can afford it, I'd like to get another two, so I'll have a bit more power. Look how nicely they fit. To connect them in parallel, or even if you were doing it in series, just so the voltage will be the same and they run better, it's better to charge one fully. I've got two. In this case, I'm going to charge one fully, then charge the other one fully, and then put them together, connect them in parallel, but not to the inverter, and then charge, um, leave them like that for 12 to 24 hours in parallel, and then they're ready for connection. This is just to ensure that the battery performs at its best, and so they're equal. Even though you've got the equalization through the inverter and everything, just so they're at the same, they perform at their best, 
and they're the, at the same voltage they recommend that every six months you do this again so you separate them charge them individually just so you get the best out of your batteries so i'm just going to hook one up change the settings on my inverter and yeah charge one and then the next Got one of them hooked up. I did find this uh, manual for the inverter, but it's written in tiny, tiny print, so I definitely need my old man glasses. Right, hit enter for three seconds. Okay. And now we go to battery type number five. Uh, five. Five is on AGM. So now We change that to user defined AGM flooded user enter bulk charging voltage settings are all in here so charging charge bulk voltage 28.8 8. so we'll do that Enter. And we'll do it up to 28.8. Six, six, seven, 28.8, enter. Done. Floating charge. Twenty seven, so that's good. And now twenty nine, it says low DC cutoff voltage. So when to cut off the the battery when you used all the power, and it says to do it twenty one point six, right? Low voltage disconnect twenty one point six. So twenty seven. It's going to 29, right? 29, enter, 21.6. 21.6, enter. Okay, that's uh, all the settings from the inverter side. So now I'm going to um, turn on the panels so we can start charging the one battery. Battery is at 26.1 volts. Now it's charging. How much solar do we have coming in? Nice. 800, 730, 700 watts coming in. So we wait to charge this one fully and then do the other one. Okay, 
So it's only been a couple of hours and they're fully it's fully charged, the one battery I hooked up. And I can tell that from this being solid green, the charge button. And yeah, 26.8 volts. So now I'll turn it off and charge the other one. Okay, that's that one connected. Inverter on, solar panels on. And we'll leave that to charge up. Okay, that didn't take long. I think they were more than 30 to 50 percent charged because it didn't take long at all. Now I'm gonna, just going to hook them up in parallel but not to the charge controller. That can go off. This can go off. Plus to plus, minus to minus. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for 12 to 18 hours, it says in the manual. So I'll do that. Always follow the manual, guys. And yeah, and now I think we are going to go and see some new friends we met. So you're going to make prunes? Yeah. I was going to, yeah. I've never seen beans that big. Oh, mm. I know what we've got for the you have lots of calendula, yeah? No. No? no? <laughs> Can I give you some? Awesome. Here? I'll give you some of my soil, but that's a weed. <laughs> this morning when I left home, I was very happy with my garden, and then I came here to Maraid's house. And <laughs> things changed. <laughs> Great ground cover awesome. and brilliant for pollinators. This couple who have a YouTube channel, Nearby Veggies, Mairead and Dan, we went to visit them for the first time. They are doing up their ruin, but their garden is something else. You know, they both know what they're doing. They really, they both have green fingers. That's the only time in Portugal I've gotten garden envy. I left from here thinking our oh, garden is beautiful and then I was like, I just couldn't stop looking around. And when we got back again that night, I just dreamt about a garden, just walking around in it like it was a scene from Secret Garden. It's just, yeah, I was blown away by it. It looks so good. It's just like, it looks like unplanned, but it's planned. They, they know a lot about what to plant where. They leave the weeds so it looks really natural. Or their veggies or something else. Like they've got kale, the leaves are this huge. It's, it just looks like a magic garden. I just loved walking through it. 
and we didn't leave empty-handed we had a car full of things they give us cuttings from their shrubs and seeds and we also left with a bucket of plums for the pigs and also a crate of plums for us so Luke can dry them and make prunes so it was such a nice day, they're lovely people and Mairead has the best collection of succulents she's been propagating for the last two years since she's been here and she's just, she has such an amazing collection and we left with succulents too Okay, it's been 24 hours pretty much. How cool their garden was, eh? It was really nice meeting them. And we really, in the short time we were there, we really learned a lot. So hopefully our gardening will get better. Now, this thing. It's been like that for nearly 24 hours, so they should be pretty equalized. So now I can hook them up. So we got to here yesterday, connect all the batteries in parallel and leave them together for 12 to 24 hours. They're now ready for connection. And then, step four, it says, it is not recommended to use one terminal as a total positive or negative output input of the battery system, as the connected terminals may heat up or even melt, if the total output input current of the battery system is too high. Oh, I see. So it's saying not to have more than one connection on any of the batteries. So my old system, I had the four batteries connected in series in parallel, and then I took a positive on one end and negative from one of the other sides and ran those into the inverter. Now it's telling you not to do that because they might overheat the terminals, but I think it's more when there's a higher current. Um, these are only 200 amp hours together, so really I probably don't need to. If I had eight of them, if I had four and four in series and in parallel, um, the current would be much higher, so I wouldn't understand that. But I've decided to put in a couple of bars anyway. So I have a positive and a negative, and I'm gonna hook them up, and like that I'll be ready for another battery or two in the future. Okay, I have both my positives and my negatives connected to the bars. Now I can connect it to the inverter. Okay. That's all good. Now the negative. Let's cover these up. Okay, covers on, everything's connected, we can turn it on. Do 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 do, panels on. Inverter on. Output power on. Okay, so there you have it, all hooked up and working well. That wasn't hard at all, and now we are lithium iron phosphate powered. Yay! So I did put um, the insulation kind of back up, though I don't think I need it because it, it, the lowest it goes is uh, minus five and inside this room is already enough to, to change that but I had it from the old batteries so I just put it up against it. So that's to the, the positives and negatives to the bar there and it goes through a fuse and then there's the inverter. So all good. So if you want to upgrade your system maybe you have lead or seed AGM gel batteries like I did and it's about time you upgraded this brand is a really good brand it's tech hobo approved so that's always a good thing I just love the fact that he actually opened it up and he can and with all his experience he can tell you that 
it's using good parts and well put together because when it comes to ordering these things from China sometimes you can't be too sure but at least I know there's a guarantee uh, tech hobo guarantee that these are the real deal and at the moment they're around 400 euros each but on the I think on the 3rd of July they have this big sale on so make sure you check out their link we'll put it in the description below and get yourself some lithium iron phosphate batteries thanks again to power queen for sending us these batteries we love them and now i need to put a door on this building <laughs> not for security really uh more for rain wind and cold so let's see those metal doors i thought so too big and it opens inwards so it's no good i'll have to see if i have a wooden one <laughs> Bye, love! Too easy. Simples. Alrighty, that's it for me this week. New in inverted commas door, but awesome new batteries. Yeah!